Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to RossCon day two. It's my pleasure to introduce Tomoya Hujita from Sony, talking about the IBO and use of Ross. Morning. My name is Tomoya Fujita from Sony Japan, and uh, we're going to talk about IBO and Ross today here. And uh, first, I got to say thank you very much for your cooperation and effort for everything you did and the uh, open source community and everyone involved in this mission. Thank you very much. We really appreciate that effort. And uh, again, I'm from Sony Japan, R&D Center. I'm a software engineer, most likely working on the system services, like middlewares, like ROS, and sometimes kernel. And the ROS is one of the open source which we used for IBO. OK, let's talk about that today. We can't see that. Yeah. Okay, so the question is, how many of you know IBO? Oh, like, uh, more <laughs> I didn't expect that's coming. <laughs> okay, like everyone, okay. But so first, I need to apologize that IBO was shipped out from Japan to be here, but something happens in the custom, so he's got <laughs> in custody in the Madrid airport. So I'm sorry about that. But instead of that, I'm gonna show you the quick video to, sh you know, Describe what the IBO is. Okay, so the IBO is the home entertainment robot, and it's also the autonomous robot that brings us emotional bond to you owners. And uh, it's not a prototype, it's a product on the market in Japan, and that's the actual product. So what's important for now is we use ROS for that. That's a great thing. And let me do some quick ads here, because I got too much pressure on me from the management. <laughs> <laughs> So that's Ivo. Oh, sorry. Can you cannot see that? Okay. That's Ivo. The product name is ERS 1000. And it's already out there on, in Japan. Okay, and it's coming up in US very soon, so you can book it. Actually, you can book the IBO for now, so pre you, can, you can do pre-order. So if you are interested, please try out IBO. Thank you very much. <laughs> and so IBO, that I'm gonna talk about the concept. IBO comes close to you and makes interaction with you very positively. That's a whole new concept or difference, you could say, against, you know, like, a, compared to existed the consumer devices, like a TV does not come to you. Or maybe you have the audio agent. The agent is just waiting for your command to wake up, right? So that's you know, like a difference that IBO has. And this is the architecture that we have. On your left bottom, a lot of sensor data comes from the physical sensors. And sometimes, if necessary, we have to do refraction you know, like uh, something, so, like uh, if we touch something really hot, we, we will untest that immediately without any thinking, right? So that, that's a reflection. And the sensor data is a process to recognition and uh, understanding the situation or environment, you know, to do the intelligent process. We do some, 
you know, like process on the edge, but Ivo is also connected to the cloud. So we can do, if the workload is heavy, we can do the process on the cloud server and bring it back to the edge and we can do the behavior planning and make actual motion to the user. And this is not, this architecture we believe is not only for Ivo, but also the other robots we are trying to. Okay, this is the product design and the concept before we start development, any development. And first we define Ivo area for making a good communication. So based on this design, we choose the physical sensors and what kind of perceptions Ivo should do or something like that. This is a start. This is the very beginning of Ivo. And uh, you can see the feeling area, Ivo can I can feel somebody or something. He has no idea about who it is, but he can realize somebody is there, and he can try to you know get attention in the attraction area to you know like make quick reaction, somebody because somebody is there, and uh, after that I can communicate with user or owners. This step is just to make natural communication for I Okay, that this is platform we. We use the, for the application processor, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 20. The product name is APQ1896, because they have a lot of you know, experience in the mobile market, and they have a good future so for audio system and the sensors. So we, ch we chose to use the Snapdragon, which is the most advanced chip in the world. So, and on the left, you can see the bunch of sensors connected to the application processor. Yeah, the two cameras and TOF, and touch sensors, and the microphone, PSD, motion detector, ambient light, IMU. And on the, on the right, we have total 22 actuators, our specific actuators, directly connected to the motion processor. So we can have the real time action here. Okay, this is a list of sensors. I'm not gonna mention all of this, but we have two cameras on the front face and back, and uh, on the f that's a fisher camera, because uh, Ivo needs some wide angle to see somebody who is standing right in front of him, right? So Ivo is like a, this big, and he's on the floor, so he can see that with that wide angle of somebody's face. And also we use the back camera for the slam, Ivo can slam uh, on the edge. There's no, work, there's no upload to the cloud. And uh, so he can make mapping, and he can get back to the charger station in the house. And also we have like uh, object detection and the cliff detection, and lift up or human detection, something like that. Okay, let me talk about the speech recognition here. Ivo has four mics available, and uh, local sound source direction and the speech recognition. It, everything is done on the edge. There is no need to upload PCM data to the cloud, so everything is done on the, on the edge. This is also cared for privacy, of course, and the commands available, just like dogs do. If, if you have dog like a sit or stay or something, something like that, you can say it, right? So I can re re understand that commands, but there is no wake up command. So the eyeball, the regularly and the constantly does a speech recognition to make only to make natural communication. So there is no wake up command for Ivo. The Ivo also, you know, we use, we have our own specific audio technology because we have a lot of experience for the audio. So we use that technology for that Ivo, for the like a digital signal processing and the speech recognition. And this is, uh, I'm gonna talk about tools from here. This is the one tool that, that is uh, cognition view. And uh, it's one of the tools developed by us. And during development, it, it is really important to, you know, you can see what's going on inside Ivo in the real time. So we need a tool to see that. So this is one of them. So you can see the cognition status of Ivo in real time. And you can see the circle. And the circle is exactly what I mentioned before, the design, that's the whole concept. So we can see with this tool if Ivo system goes with what we designed exactly. So this is pretty much you know, important for, for debugging. Okay, 
This is ML data collected by ML stands for machine learning. And uh, with this we can see, we can, we can get the uh, sensor data from the eyeball. Of course the recording is supported. So we can, later we can play back the sensor data for eyeball. And this is what we called, what, what is called is a neural network console. And uh, it's really common to use the deep learning for the recognition, right? So, and we have our own open source library and the console that is the Sony neural network console. This is a console. So you, with this theory, you can see a network just like that. And uh, even it can optimize the net network automatically. And like I said, this is already open source and it's open public. So if you are interested in like AI programming or deep learning, you can, you know, you can have it checked out. It's worth to give it a shot. Yeah. And uh, all of the training for the recognition is done offline. We don't do anything, any training on the edge. So we have everything trained on the server and we deploy that network to the edge, edge on eyeball. Okay, this is, uh, anybody familiar with the uh, gaming? Yeah, no? Okay, this is, uh, it just looks like a behavior editor and, uh, and it's really common for gaming. And uh, this is, uh, maybe some of you already realized, this is a Unity custom plugin and the describe behavior tree to connect each motion which is created by the motion creator and we can with this tool, we can you know, make the whole you know, one behavior from some like, motions. And this is also the Unity custom plugin and model to make motion. So far, no plan. We get a lot of questions if we you know, like expose this you know, plugin and make model for the open source, but so far, no plan to do that. So this is used by motion creator most likely. And since they are not software engineer, so it's pretty hard to use gazebo. So that's why we made this tool for them. So they can make a lot of motions with this tool. And this is screenshot uh, from the apps on, on the smartphone. You can, as you can see, you can teach some tricks like uh, motions. And of course you can make, make him forget about that. And of course, <laughs> You can do some system setting like Wi-Fi or cameras, pictures. You can see that on the apps. Okay, we have the ROS boundary uh, between some system daemon. For example, here, like uh, eyes, eye daemon, and sound mixer. And we, the motion processor is not a ROS node. It's a uh, different hardware and connected to the, you know, like actuators. And the body controller, is ROS node running on AP, communicate with the motion processor, and the motion processor controls actuators. The boundary is for real time. I think you already understand that from this picture. And for the behavior, which is based on eye, speakers, and uh, motions, because uh, they has to be synchronized. If, <laughs> for example, like, uh, if they are not synchronized, eye would seem to be barking, barking but sounds comes after like five seconds. That's, it does not make any sense. So for the real time, we designed this architecture. Okay, now we have, of course, uh, we have the experience for the mobile platform like uh, security, wireless camera, and sensors. And uh, Ivo has also AWS IoT and the AWS connected to the AWS cloud. And uh, we use ROS for eyeball, but it's still a challenge for us to use ROS for the product. But we, I'm from R&D, and uh, we think we should give it a shot. That's, uh, that's, for us, that's a challenge for us. And we did put everything together, that is eyeball. Okay, now we have been talking about the eyeball so much, and we did some embed optimization for eyeball. So let's talk about that from here. Okay, before going, before moving on the main topic, let me explain how how it works for the ROS transport layer. If you are ROS application engineer, 
Like you don't need to know anything about this. It's perfectly concealed by API. So you have maybe you don't need to realize that. But for my explanation, I let me explain that first. There are two types of connections. One is XML RPC, which is, takes care of the configuration data, such as who you know publishes or subscribes on which topics or services. And uh, that's XML RPC. And uh, it's not important for now, because that, that happens like uh, only boot time. Once your ROS system boot comes up online, the every, you know, everything should be done. The configuration has been done. So there is no activity for the XML PC, most likely. Of course, the second one, which is TCP ROS and UDP ROS is important for us, because this takes care of the user data payload. So, which means every single time you publish the data, or if you're on the other side, you receive the data, you're gonna have to use TCP ROS or UDP ROS. In default, you use TCP ROS. So that, the point is, every single time, as long as your ROS system is running. Okay, so what is the problem? CPU stress, and latency, and throughput. So, you know, like ROS is uh, pretty good for the packages and the build tools and documentation, but it's not good enough to be optimized for the CPU consumption and the latency for the embedded system. So we focus on the TCP ROS to enhance it. Be because the, it, like I said, if we can optimize TCP ROS, we can take advantage of that every single time you publish the data. That's a huge, you know, like optimization for us. So, the for optimization, the, pro the priority number one policy is for us is do not break the user space. So that's, if you are dealing with a system layer, that's the priority number one. You do not break any user space. So we, we think we should have good affinity with the TCP ROS. And with that, small latency and high throughput. And no change required for the application. Okay, this is expected improvement as for the system, the system typical number. And we have the Skylake for AMD64 and the Heike ARM64. Um, and uh, as you can see, for the Skylake, the latency is uh, 1.7 times faster, and Heike two times faster, and throughput. And for Skylake, four times improved. And for Heike, 10 times. That's really good optimization for system. This is just system typical number. So this is not what we get on the application. I'm gonna talk about it later. <coughs> okay, this is, uh, this is the current communication we have for ROS transport layer. And uh, even if the connection is system inside, you're gonna have to use TCP IP socket anyway. So there is no way you can do. But with our fix, you don't need to do that. Everything is done using Unix domain socket in the kernel. We don't go down to the IP layer. So the socket layer is the API's really good affinity you know, for Unix domain socket or TCP ROS. Okay, this is what we get improvement as a result for the application. That's a, this is a hello world benchmark and the result comes up like for Skylake 8% improved. This is latency. And the high key is 24% 20, improved. That's a good number. And you, again, you don't have to change any single line of code for the application. All you have to do is rebuild the ROSCOM and put it into your, you know, like into your system and reboot. That's, that's all you have to do. You don't need to know anything about that. And the source code is ready. It's, uh, it's kinetic dever, and uh, we, I already made a pull request for the main line. And we understand the current code that includes unnecessary changes. Of course, the final commit is uh, there's no conflict to the main line, but uh, there's a, we can see the, some difference between the git difference. So, but we understand that, but we first we like, we like to know if anyone is interested in this fix. So if any request comes up to us, we are willing to adjust code to the main line, of course. 
So if you are you know, like interested, please make sure give us the stars on the GitHub. OK. From now, let me, explain, let me introduce some patches which we use for Eyeball. It, they, they were you know, so useful. First is direct IO with Rossbug. Sometimes you know, we use Rossbug for the debug, right? And, uh, <clears throat> but Rossbug itself sometimes stores CPU. And that, that causes us, like, uh, we cannot you know, reproduce the issue again. So that's a huge pain for us for debug. So we don't like that. So with this patch, we use direct IO without CPU, CPU, you know, like power. So it's useful for, for us for debugging. And Epoch, this is a really good patch on the, you know, it's open source. And the, for the latest Kinetic, it's already merged in. So, but this is really good. You know, like a poor system code is not good enough for if you are dealing with a lot of file descriptors. Because uh, you need to check if the event is ready or not to scan the file descriptor on the user space. It's a huge pain for the application. But if you use ePOL, everything is done in the kernel. So you just check the event and uh, you can process whatever you do. And polling frequency. ROS knows makes a lot of threads inside our core library. And, uh, there, there are main threads and the poll manager and the XML PC manager and the ROS out thread. And uh, that, that's going to stress your platform. So we did, uh, we make a tunable, like an environmental value to you know, set the polling frequency. For, so you can set the timeout, timeout for each processes, I mean the ROS nodes. And the, we have our own logging system, so uh, we don't make any ROS out threads, nothing for this. Okay, uh, so finally, for ROS2, you know, they have been talking about ROS2, like a DDS, uh, on yesterday, and uh, we are working on ROS2 DDS implementation layer. So we can, you can create our own implementation that's gonna be much faster, you know, specified for embedded system and optimized. And it's under consideration. But we are working on that. And we, and we hope we're gonna you know, expose this fix, maybe for future. Okay, again, thank you very much for your cooperation and everyone in this room and everyone involved in this mission. And we really appreciate all your support. That's why we made IMO. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Does anyone have some questions? Looks like we got a question. Uh, can you tell me which process I use for motion control? Oh, that comes, <laughs> comes from you. <laughs> yeah, let's put it in that way. Thank you very much. Um, it, it's good to know. I'm from Renaissance. Uh, so I was curious, you kind of uh, went quickly over the patch to uh, Rossbag Direct Write. Uh, yeah. Is that going to be open source or is there a pull request for that? It's open source. Okay. Yeah, it's out there. We found that patch because uh, Rosbug stores is our CPU. So. Oh, you mean? Okay, I thought you had changes to it. You mean you just found the package? Is that what you meant? No, not okay. package. Patch. Oh. We backported it. Oh. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My question is not about technique. It's about business. Uh, what kind of language the, this iPod can recognize? And that is uh, how much? If you're talking about online uh, order? The, the language is uh, language is Japanese, of course, and English. And uh, I missed the second question. Sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, can you recognize uh, English? Yeah. OK, good. Yeah. Uh, how much, the price? The price? <laughs> <laughs> the price, I guess, uh, for US, 
uh, I think uh, almost $2,000. Well, yeah. 